Welcome back to the Shine Within podcast. I am excited to have my special guest here. Meet Leanne Van Epps, an accomplished online business manager with a knack for helping business owners streamline their operations and scale their businesses. With her multifaceted skills in strategic planning, project management, and online marketing, she successfully identifies areas for improvement and implements efficient workflows. Her strengths lie in strategic thinking and effective communication, making her a dynamic partner in achieving business goals. Always on the top of the latest trends and practices, Leanne expertly uses various online tools to drive results. So let's hear it from this seasoned professional with a deep understanding of the digital business landscape. Leanne, thank you so much for joining me today. It's nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. And so... I love, we, we spoke before and I just loved your story and it touched me. It touched me. I was like, wow, you know, I never really thought about how alcohol can affect certain things that people people have, like certain conditions that people have. Yes. And I would love for you to share with the audience, you know, okay. about your story and how you were able to not, well, figure it out that, Hey, drinking makes this condition a little bit worse for me. Let me go ahead and quit that. <laughs> yes. Yes. So it was, um, so I'll start at the very beginning. Um, so I have a, 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 I have epilepsy is what I have. And so the thing with epilepsy, epilepsy is it's different for each individual person. Um, so it's basically a neurological disorder um, that it just, it's the technical diversion, uh, technical definition is a neurological disorder marked by a sudden recurrent episodes of sensory disturbance, loss of consciousness or convulsions. Um, as associated with abnormal electrical electrical activity in the brain. So that is like a very generalized uh, description of epilepsy. For each person, it's different. It could be um, loss of smell or smelling something weird, hearing something weird um, or weird to them, I guess I should say. Um, and in my case, it's the trigger is stress. And later in life, I found out alcohol. And so um, when I was younger... I would have um, these little episodes, they were called petty mall uh, episodes. And so basically it's like when I got put on the spot, whether it was reading in class or getting in trouble, (laughs) I would (laughs) just kind of like shut down. My eyes would flutter a little bit. I would come back and say, if I was reading in class, I would come back and pick up exactly where I left off. It was just like, I just took a little vacation and it would just last for a few seconds but it was anything that were that put my system into like complete like hyper overdrive like oh my gosh what am i doing and just that on the spot um doctor said i would grow out of it i eventually did didn't have any thought of it during high school no issues at all i graduated high school went to go um on to college and and work and know all the things and all the party lifestyle fun things that you're supposed to do after high school and um I had a seizure at my work and they were like, what in the world? I'm like, I have no idea. So it kind of started at 18, never had another one until I was uh, 21, 20, excuse me, 20, 21. And they were random, completely random. Um, I did have a couple while driving, no accidents, thankfully. Um, But it wasn't until I, so the last big one I had was when I was 21 until I was 26. And so during those five years, everything was off the table. I mean, I was in my young twenties. So anything and everything I could do to be out in the, out having fun with friends, you know, relationships, you know, whatever the case. So the relationship I was in at the time of when I turned 26 was, um, I just became engaged and we were planning our wedding and, um, it was in January and, um, We had gone out the night before, went to go pick up his son, and I just wasn't feeling very good. I just remember staying in the truck and just being like, I'm just going to sit here. I'll wait for you. Let's just leave it at that. Go home. And I was about to make some lunch. And next thing I know, I'm waking up to the EMTs over me. No idea what was going on. So um, after speaking with the doctor at that time, we realized that dehydration and alcohol were a trigger to my seizures. Well, that was one of our founding um, connections, I guess you would say, of that relationship. So needless to say, after we even went through with the wedding, even when we went through with that, 
that relationship did not last. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that, and it's, it's sad because it's like, there's so much more to life than just drinking alcohol and partying. Like, and a lot of people don't realize that, especially when that's been kind of ingrained with you for like a while, like that's just your livelihood. That's what your parents did. That's what, you know, that was some of the people that we would actually go with was his parents. It was like a family tradition, like Mm -hmm. literally Hank Williams Jr. song, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so anyway, that led me on to, um, the rest of my life. And like, I did get into another not so healthy relationship that was also based on alcohol and I would in turn have the same issues. And so it wasn't until, um, I actually moved to Texas and eventually met my husband and I would have my slip ups of, you know, every so often, and I would pay for that. And I take medication for it. It's just the, the alcohol just breaks through the medication. So I take a daily dosage, uh, twice a day of some medication and, um, I haven't, so anyway, my husband and I got together, slowed down on the drinking. He's not a drinker at all. And like, I think he's maybe consumed like before we met, like maybe three drinks prior to us being together. Like he was just not a drinker, not wow. his thing, not his scene. Um, so anyway, fast forward to us moving up to Oregon, we had meet with some of my friends and we've had drinks here and there. Um, several times but at this one particular incident we went on a um a train it was a train ride through town and it was a fabulous time we had a great time but they had different mixtures of beer and hard alcohol and i was like it'll be fine you know just just like i did in my 30s in my 20s in my (laughs) yeah it'll be fine no matter the consequence well the thing with what this last one was my daughter was at home with my grand with her grandfather, my dad. We wake up the next morning. I was not feeling well. Mm. I don't remember anything besides waking up out of bed. And then the next thing I know, I'm being hauled off to the hospital again. Mm. Um, I found out later I had four seizures oh back goodness. to back. That's the most I've ever had. Um, they did keep Harley out of the room, but she was still like really concerned as to, you know, what's going on with mom? Like, yeah. why can't I go see her? Yeah. So I know it sounds like from the story perspective, like, why didn't you like stop sooner? As we all know, it's a social aspect. It's a social lubricant. It's a, let's have a good time. Let's have fun. Let's do this. Let's, you know, let's go have a drink. It's so minor when you say it in just those terms and that you don't think about it in the long-term factor. So Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the house, you know, as my husband was there at my dad's house, my dad was home, his wife was home there, you know, everybody was there. But like, if we were in a situation, like, I hate to do like hypotheticals, but like, if we were in a situation to where I was in the bathroom and I fell and hit my head and I was by myself, you never know, right? Mm-hmm. And that that is the, the thing with epilepsy is like, you don't know exactly when it's going to hit. There are people who probably do have like, their, they know their, um, their signs. And that's, there's actually, actually like guard, um, guide dogs that can help. And there's so many more resources, but, um, because mine are so inconsistent, I don't have any of those. I just have the medication and I know, I know what my triggers are, which is alcohol and stress. So, um, needless to say, yeah. <laughs> that's been, um, I think over two years ago now, and yeah. it's been completely life-changing, um, Wow, Leanne. Well, thank you so much for sharing that because, you know, I think we drink because we're stressed. <laughs> yeah. After, after work, you know, people go ahead and uh, grab their wine, their glass of wine, wind down. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's where they get wind down from. Wind down. I don't know. <laughs> yes. It just came to my <laughs> my head. But I'm so happy that you actually, you're like, that's it. You know, this is this is the final straw. Like four seizures back back I mean do you think that perhaps um is it because you drink a lot maybe during that time or do you think is it like it increased during like as we get older like our body changes I feel like part of it is being older um because my my stamina is not (laughs) (laughs) compared to my 20s um and it's so like it seems like it had increasingly gotten worse over the course of aging um which is fine. You know, like I'm 
I'm not 20 years old anymore. I do not need to be acting like a 20 year old. And, and that's the thing about also becoming into like this age is like, appreciate what you have and where, you know, where you've been and what you've accomplished and enjoy the now, because like, there's so many people and I understand like it's for some people, I get it. Like it's, that's their release. That's their, you know, their wind down and whatnot. And I, I get it because I've, I've been there. I was in the mortgage industry for 20 years. So it's like, yeah, I get <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I get why people use it as like a way to just like decompress. But um having having my daughter, it was a huge eye opener into like there's I'm not saying that my past relationships weren't like worth being there, but mm-hmm. I, I don't ever want her to see me in that state again. Right. And then <laughs> even the after effect, like um, my husband did take a picture of me and her and I look like I just went through a train wreck. Like mm. it's because it's, it's taxing on the body. Right. Right. Um, right. And just being hung over is taxing on the body. And then you put your body through these convulsions. It's like, I just, I was whitewashed. My eyes were sunken. I just looked absolutely horrible. And you know, my daughter's just right here curled up next to me. Mm. And I'm just like, okay, nope, I can't do that ever again (laughs) yeah isn't it amazing how our children just really change our whole perspective on everything in life like they really are our teachers (laughs) they really are eye openers eye openers you know they they're the ones who make us realize like oh okay like I'm gonna use myself for an example um you realize like wow mommy's been selfish you know she's thinking about herself and all she does is wanting to drink and drink and drink. Like again, I was talking about myself <laughs> and um, and she doesn't care about me. You know, the, there's this is probably what my son was thinking at age five or six years old, you know, <laughs> like, why is she always getting into arguments with daddy? You know, why is she fighting him? Why are the cops coming over all the time? Right. You know, like these, they see these things and it breaks my heart thinking about it. Like, oh my gosh, my son has gone through like some severe trauma mm-hmm. and it sucks because like, I mean, I didn't grow up in an alcoholic family. Like my mom does barely like maybe one sip once every three years. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but I had trauma as well, you know, and I think all the children have trauma. So I had to think about like, oh my goodness, here I'm pushing my trauma and he's seeing how my trauma has affected my adulthood, you know, from my childhood trauma to being an adult. And it's, it's amazing how our children are, like you said, like our eye openers, like, Mm -hmm. oh my goodness, like I need to wake up here. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So thanks so much for sharing that. And then I wanted to talk to you about the whole social aspect of drinking. Now, I know you said you have a lot of friends from like high school, even that are still your friends, and then they actually still drink. And then you still hang out with them. How, how do you juggle that? How is that manageable for you? Um, water and soda yeah. are the biggest things Um, for, and even it's awkward. It was really, really awkward at first. Um, Like I'd mentioned before when, um, the the relationship I was in when when my epilepsy kind of like really kicked in hard hardcore like it ended that because he did not want to give up because I I knew at that time that things would have to change but I was still stubborn enough to still like oh no I'm fine I'm fine everything will be fine and so it was till this one and so it's basically um I I don't want to say it's difficult because like it's a change it's mm-hmm. you know nobody likes to deal with change I mean unless you thrive on it which there are people who do which is <laughs> kudos to you guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um just the adjustment of like <clears throat> saying no and then like not having to fear that repercussion which I did when in my early tw- in my mid-20s was like you have to explain yourself you have to give a reason you have to do this and, and it is becoming more so like um, acceptable nowadays to where it's just like, okay, cool. You don't want something cool. And it's, it's nice to be at that level to where like, you know, you don't have to have that thing, you know, to be one of the cool crowd like you used to. And, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's changed, but like, we still have a tight knit group. We still chat, you know, often probably don't see each other as like we, as much as we used to prior, um, 
we, we do live farther away now um mm -hmm. but still like I, i'm still in communication with most of the crowd and they still they still love me at least they yeah. tell me that <laughs> of course and you know what i'm sure they support you you know they're like we don't want to see leanne go through this you know these seizures and have it where it can risk her life you know so i'm sure they're very supportive and understanding mm -hmm. um because you know like you said earlier alcohol is like so acceptable it's like the only drug that people question why aren't you having in comparison to like let's say methamphetamine or you know cocaine or any of the other street drugs and recreational drugs that are out there right because for me like <laughs> i had a hard time um at first and i felt like i had to isolate myself because yes. if because all my friends you know you know they didn't have issues like i had issues they were able to like stop drinking if they wanted to right but I couldn't like I had to keep on going. And so I had to really like step away and just really do some self-evaluation for myself and say, you know what, let's start developing some new habits here that will help you, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. not feel like you're by yourself and alone or a loner or anything. Or so then that's what I did. I noticed I was starting to go to different like uh, communities Yes, for example, like church. So I was going to church and then serving, uh, doing volunteer work there. Excellent. And then I was meeting new people that, you know what, alcohol wasn't a thing for them. Or, and yeah. I, you're blessed that your husband actually has, has no alcohol, period. Do you think yeah. that actually helps tremendously in your, um, well, yes. then you're not <laughs> drinking anymore? hundred percent, hundred percent. Because it's, um, with the, with the previous, experiences it was always the person who you know he was like the other person was like oh let's go get you know let's go check out this winery let's go check out this new brewery in town let's go check out this thing let's go check out that and it's like you know I just went along for the ride and it's like let's do a wine tasting and it's like okay and it's really? like not now it's like okay I'm, I'm good like I don't mind those places because they have you know fun atmospheres and sometimes you know like the games and stuff you know and like I don't mind those places by any means but it's definitely not um as weird as, so I found out when I was drinking wine I couldn't sleep so like the whatever <laughs> I don't know <laughs> whatever was causing me like I would fall asleep and then um the whatever is in it I want to say tannins, but I think that's what like makes it the flavor, but uh, <laughs> it would, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would be awake until morning. So I would get like maybe like, three hours of sleep on whenever I drank wine. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, why am I doing this? And my body, I think it was just my body being like, Hey dummy. <laughs> <laughs> the body you see what you're doing to yourself. <laughs> yeah. So the body is amazing. Like sometimes when our body, like doesn't sleep or it's in pain or some headache it's really important to pay attention to our body we have like it's telling us something like nah, nah, hello mm -hmm. i am still here but i won't be here if you continue doing this <laughs> you know and oh man there's so many stories that like over and over my body was like reject reject and I would be throwing up throwing up but I was still mm -hmm. gonna drink right afterward like because my body okay this is gonna sound weird my body was rejecting it but my mind yes. felt like it needed it mm -hmm. and so mentally I was just like drinking drinking but my body's like bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> yeah no but, I I agree I was my uh one of my <laughs> This sounds silly. I had, I was married previously, but so I had a bachelorette party and I remember this is the only time I ever did that, but I rejected it and then went right back to it. You know, it's like, it's, it's my party. I have to do this. And I was like, now it's like, okay, you need to listen to yourself. You know, it's like those, those, those questions that you see on Facebook, like what, what, what advice would you give yourself? You know, if you were to give yourself to your, like your teen years or your 20 years, be like, listen to yourself. Because that's across the board, whether it's with alcohol, with relationships, with friendships, with mm -hmm. being in the right place at the wrong time type mm -hmm. scenarios, like your body knows. And if you just listen to your gut, basically, and that's one thing I've learned, especially as my older years is like, listen to your gut and it will not steer you wrong. It may like lead you down to questions that you don't want to answer at the moment, but inevit inevitably, like you are, you know, what's right your body knows it's right. Just listen to yourself, like listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. We all have it for a particular reason. That's right. 
So listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that little voice and that little feeling. Actually, yeah, it's a gut feeling. They always said the gut is like the second brain. So listen to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, if the if one is telling you to do the bad thing, listen to the other the other brain. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So I look back now and I'm like, I could have got out of like so many different scenarios if I would have just listened to so many different bad relationships. And it's like, my gut knew right away, right away. Yeah. But I was like, nah. <laughs> I know. And speaking of relationships, same thing, you know, my ex-husband didn't want to get sober. He wanted to stay in whether it's drugs or alcohol, both. And I couldn't live like that anymore. So I had to make that decision. Like, no, I can't. If he doesn't want to get help, I'm not going to try to help him because he needs to help himself. And that's why I had a, we had a divorce. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had then, which is, a it was a blessing because then I was able to like, he'll, he'll do some internal work and yes. then alcohol is now like, eh. I mean, I can talk about, I mean, obviously I have to talk about it because I'm a coach in it. <laughs> yes. But it doesn't bother me like if someone were to drink in front uh -huh. of me, it doesn't bother me if I were to go to a party and there's people drinking. And if it were to bother me, I wouldn't go to those parties. Yeah. No, 100%. <laughs> you have a choice. I feel like we have a choice. And I think people feel like, well, I'm going to be missing out if, you know, I don't go out to these parties. What would you say to somebody who's say saying that or has that mindset? I would say... um, one check to see who the people are that are there because like if they can't support you at that decision then those are not your people for one um if you feel that you're missing out because you are not drinking you you need to reevaluate your thinking process because the thing with about um being at the right place at the right time is you will be 100% comfortable you will not need anything to make that situation better um so like if you if you feel like I mean we're we're all in our own business right so we go to marketing events and those are for different personality types like myself I'm an introvert I I hate them right <laughs> and so like back in my younger years I would lubricate because it was easier to talk to people well now it's like you have too many different options to not be comfortable in any type of situation so there's online events there's you know different sort of just so many different um distractions to where that's drinking is should not be your main requirement to attend a function uh whether it's for fun for for business for you know meeting new people like if you're trying to date like you should always just be in a comfortable situation mm -hmm. and then until you are able to acknowledge that you can be in a comfortable situation then do some inside healing for sure. Yes, yeah, so and know your intention, you know, that your is your intention just to drink. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or is your intention to enjoy yourself and socialize and, you know, maybe get some customers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, because it's when it comes down like especially to the marketing side of things, like I mean, I've been at this was never me unfortunately, but like I've been at marketing events to where it was like, oh goodness somebody needs to take that away from Sally because she's about to make a scene and we don't want that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of a song of, oh, oh, oh Sally, Whew, that girl. It was like back in the day, like in the eighties or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I just brought that up, but you're, you're absolutely right. You know, and then you start looking like, okay, that could have been me. <laughs> if I had all those dreams, I could have been just like Sally <laughs> or even worse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You know, and I have some stories at some holiday parties, but I won't get into those. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, like, what changes have you noticed for yourself since you've stopped drinking? Clarity mm -hmm. is, a, is a big one. Um, and it, I mean, it does, like I said, mentioned earlier, like we still can go to those locations uh, because a lot of them have great food. You know, like <laughs> yeah. some of the breweries in town have amazing food. And that is one thing that my husband and I, like, we are very cautious of like what we eat, but we like, we enjoy our food on our weekends. Oh and yeah. So, like we, mm, yes, gotta yeah. love, we love our food. Um, But definitely like clarity. And a lot of it was, I was able to, this was before I met my husband. Um, I spent a lot of time working on myself as it was um because like i was going through this cycle of dating the same person 
in different bodies. Yeah. And I took a, a break and um, I messaged my husband because we ended up having a mutual friend. Well, he wasn't my husband then, obviously, but um, yeah. I sent a message because I was like, hey, we should work out sometime because I knew we were going to the same gym. We follow each other on Instagram, became friends on Facebook because of that mutual friend. And I just was like, let's just see what happens. And so I sent him the message and I was sober. I was like, I had not been drinking. He was completely shocked. He's like, is this to the right person? Like, <laughs> and so like, like, that's how it started our relationship. Like more on like our interests on like movies, on working out, on um, different types of food. <laughs> you know so it was nice to actually connect with somebody on a different level rather than how many beers can you drink right right right. and that opened up the door of like having a little bit more meaningful conversation and connection and ended up being a great relationship and we have our daughter and but it's because I was I feel like because I was more in tune with myself because I took that time um, I was able to have that open door to him of more other more options to provide um, like more interest you know because like for a long time it was like oh yes I, I know what that drink is or you know I've I've had that and, and that was the topic of the conversation yeah and or it was um, you know I you know I can work I work out I can run you know like those things but it wasn't like what books do you like to read what movies do you like to watch what what you know do you like the stars in the sky like what interests you on that aspect and it's like you're actually asking them these questions and so it's been a, t- a totally um 180 for sure yeah. but I feel like if I hadn't taken that time I would not have met him met him at yeah. all <laughs> yeah sometimes you just need to take that time for yourself and yes. then do some inner work <laughs> and say why am I why am I attracting these these guys <laughs> what's going on and then mm-hmm. once you notice like because I felt like for myself, like I attracted the guys that how I was, you know, unhealed. I was going through some stuff. Obviously I was drinking. And so everyone that I was dating was drinking. Like the first date was like with alcohol. Like Mm. you had to drink in order to have the date or you would even like drink beforehand so you can calm nerves and then go over there and drink more. And then you go hang out after dinner and then drink more. It's like they don't really know who you are right actually at that point I didn't even know who I was exactly (laughs) I I, to be honest I didn't know but now that I know (laughs) I don't I don't have to worry about dating anyway because I'm already (laughs) yeah I mean what was nice is that like you said when well like with my husband and I when we started like going out and we we kind of dated and we went to a restaurant it was nice to have the waiter come over and offer like a fancy restaurant i'll say here here's the drink menu don't you want a lovely drink and da da we're both looking at each other like oh no we don't drink both of us at the same time and it felt so good you know like oh yeah, yeah we, we both don't drink it feels good so I, i'm happy that i'm able to make that connection with him where we're both sober-minded you mm-hmm. know and i feel like our relationship actually is like a hundred percent better than any of my other past relationships yes because I we know how to communicate properly to each other not saying he's ever had a problem he's never he's not a fan of alcohol from the (laughs) get-go he never liked it really but we have such a good relationship like it's 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 I mean anything comparison to my last relationship was a good relationship but like this is a (laughs) solid one (laughs) this is now do you notice if um do you have a lot of episodes or do you, have they decreased since you've stopped drinking? Oh yes, they've definitely decreased. Wow. There might be some days that um that I don't sleep well or I get more stressed that I feel like a little off. But like on those days I when I explain it to my husband, I'm like, I feel a little off today, but not seizure-ish. Seizure-ish is how I explain it. And he's like, Okay. He's like, just go go rest. Go take a nap if you need to. I'm like, that's probably what I'll do today, but <laughs> yeah um but yeah that that last one has seriously that that's been that was the last one wow Um, and so it's been over two years and so I would always tell my doctor oh yeah I haven't had one in a while but like this is I'm legitimately like being honest like I haven't had one since that time so that's been maybe it's been three years now wow 
I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's hey, been quite a while. <laughs> it's been so long that you don't remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember the incident and stuff, but it's like I I think we're we're at the three year mark now. Wow, that's which is, is great. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so because you know, people I think people need to look at, you know, whatever condition they have, um, it could be even headaches, you know, mm-hmm. uh, stomach ache, uh ulcers, especially oh, anything goodness, yeah. anything that they have. Um try to take out alcohol and see what happens. Well, sure. Cause right? the things, like people don't understand or don't put, you know, it's connecting the dots. Right. Cause like alcohol is a dehydrator. If, if you get high migraines because you need water, well, maybe don't drink that drink, you know, maybe replace it with a glass of water and, you know, listen to your body. That's <laughs> no matter what the case, if you get rashes, if you get, you know, like you mentioned the ulcers or if you, um, again because it's a dehydrator if you get muscle cramps mm. like there's so many Same. different factors well even like diabetes is another factor because mm-hmm. it spikes your blood sugar so mm. there just think about all the factors and try you know take a week just take a week off and see what happens yeah take a week off and see what happens and i'm sure your body's gonna be like thank you thank you thank you yes. and you'll be doing things that you to put in think you could do <laughs> probably go out there and run a, t- a 5k or something right <laughs> <laughs> no alcohol in my system i'm gonna go ahead and enjoy myself <laughs> exactly now, yeah so i want to pivot to your business can you talk a little bit about what what you do and how you help uh, sure. clients and people like myself like entrepreneurs <laughs> Yes. So I am an online business manager. And what I do is I, um, the, basically the tasks that overwhelm and consume your, as an entrepreneur, there's so many, there's so many moving parts and there's so many things that a person is like really good at. And there's so many things that they are not good at. And so where a person might be really good at sales and really good at marketing themselves and really good at talking to people, they might not be good at the details. They might not be good at the analytics, they might not be good at the reports and the spreadsheets and the tracking of the details of like, which client did I talk to last? Which one needs to be spoken to? Which one needs a contract? Which one, you know, that kind of, those kind of details. And so that's where I step in and I can help with those. I can help with your social media content. I can help review the analytics of what's going on with your website, what's going on with your, uh, your content on social media, what's going on with just your day-to-day business activities. Like where, where do we, where can we poke holes to streamline the process to make it a smoother process for everybody involved, including the owner and the clients. Um, so that's, that's what I do. I, I love it. I literally fell into this position. Um, as I mentioned, I was in the mortgage industry for 20 some years and, um, sales never really, never really got me. I couldn't, I couldn't. (laughs) I was, yeah, just couldn't do it. And, um, so loan processing was like my calling. Uh, the last position I had in the mortgage industry was compliance. And so that's the very, between those two, they're very analytical. You look at the rules, you look at the regulations, you look at what fits where, what's, you know, what box fits here and you got to make it work. And so that falls into the business aspect of, okay, so what, what business do you have? what's your goal? What, what do you need to do? What are you good at as the business owner? And where can I slide in to help? Because a a person cannot be good at all the things as a business owner. I know I'm not good at all the things. And so like I hire out on certain things that I, I struggle with. And so that's, that's kind of the point is just being that partnership to streamline and make things smoother and better for everybody. Yeah. That's so nice because I hate spreadsheets. <laughs> I don't even know how to use them because I was I do massage therapy for like over 16 years. Yeah. I never needed a spreadsheet because I worked at, I mean, I still work at the hotel at Four Seasons Hotel. So yeah, someone like you would be definitely helpful. And time, how much time do you save, right? When yes. they hire, when they hire you, they probably save a tons of time that they could spend with their family. Mm-hmm. They can go on vacation now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they don't have to be all stressed out because they're like, oh, okay, Leanne has it under control. I'm good. Mm-hmm. So that is amazing. Yeah. I mean, entrepreneurs definitely need help. Seriously. Oh, like yes. I like I'm like a solopreneur. So like I do it all myself. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, 
how am I doing this? But and I know once, you know, <laughs> there's going to be a time where I'm like, I can't do everything. And then that's where you come in. <laughs> exactly. That's uh, this one gentleman, I, he's a new client. And so we're getting the, you know, gears going and stuff and trying to figure out how, how things work out. He's a little bit different than my other clients, but when I first met him, um, he just, we did a video chat and he just kept his head in his hands like this the whole time. And he was uh, talking about some ailments that he has and he's like, I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's think of a plan. Like, let's, let's do this. And it's been, uh, I think a month today. And I talked to him on the phone earlier and I have never heard him happier. Wow. And it's only a month. Right. But yeah. like the tone in his voice has literally changed in a month. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> yes. So he's not as stressed and maybe he won't turn to alcohol. <laughs> I don't know about that yet, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it does help because like I said, like stress does cause people to want to yes. do things. So you're probably helping him out because he feels like, okay, I'm happier. Just yeah. the shift in mood, right? <laughs> that's, that's it. Because I mean, he was talking about depression and like, oh, no. I could see like the signs. Right. And so, but like, that was my, my purpose is like, what can I do? And he's like, well, I'm really overwhelmed with this task. I'm like, okay, let's go through it. And I went through it. And then I've made some more progress on some other things. And he, he called, he's like, like I, he was so upbeat. And I was like, I was yeah. just really happy like to hear that. And like I said, it's only been a month. So I mean, I can, now I'm like looking forward to like what the next couple of months is going to be like, what kind of transition he's going to make. Hopefully his marriage will get better. Like, I don't know, but it's like, I'm sure it will. More there's time. such a cycle for everything. Right. That's so awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that as well. Uh, where can people find you, follow you, work with you? <laughs> so I'm on Facebook and, and um, Instagram, uh, leanne.vanups. Oh, no. So Facebook and Instagram is leanne.vanups. Uh, website is just www.leannevanups.com. Um, email is leanne, which is L-E-I-G-H-A-N-N at leannevanups.com and um, contact me. I have a Calendly link on my email. Um, I have it set up on my link tree as well. So just set up a coffee chat and we can just figure things out. Awesome. Now, do you have a listener's gift? I do. Um, I have a, um, I do have a freebie that I can send out and um, I will send you the link and we can put it on the show notes. Yeah. Yes. Let's yeah. put them on the show notes <laughs> okay. as, as, and also all the rest of your links, how yeah. to find you and contact you. Yeah. So it's just uh, five steps on how to streamline your business is my, my freebie. So um, I will send that. So that way people can take a look at it and see what they need to, what they need to do. So awesome. Well, any last words? Just thank you. I really appreciate oh. it. And you've been amazing. And uh, just, just thank you. <laughs> oh, my pleasure, Leanne. It's always nice to see you. And yes, I'm so happy that your health is, I mean, shoot, I mean, three years, no, no episode. Yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations on thank that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. Take care. <laughs> Bye.